All right, thanks, Dustin. All right, this is the regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Tennessee Athletic uh, Commission meeting. I uh, thank all of uh, the members for being here today uh, on uh, such short notice as we had to reschedule uh, from our last meeting, but it looks like um, we everyone's here and we'll be able to, to hit quorum. Um, I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, it, let me go ahead and establish role. Okay, Matt Reddish. Present. All right, great. Uh, Christy Halbert. I'm here. Patrick Wren. I'm here. And uh, Dan McGrew. I'm here. Great, thank you. All right, we do have a quorum. Uh, I'll read the uh, the uh, notice of meeting. Uh, notice of June 16, 2020 meeting of the Athletic Commission was posted to the website on May 29th, 2020. So that was properly noticed. Now, um, with all of our electronic recordings or teleconferences, anytime we don't meet physically uh, on site, we have to read a statement of necessity and then vote to approve that. And of course, all of our actionable items uh, uh, going forward uh, after, after the fact will be roll call vote. Um, so just want to put that on your radar before we open up. Let me go ahead and read the statement of necessity. All right, according to TCA 844-108-B2, if a physical quorum is not present at the location of a meeting of a governing body, the governing body must file such determination of necessity, including the recitation of the facts and circumstances on which it was based with the Office of Secretary of State no later than two working days after the meeting. Furthermore, TCA 844-108-A3 defines necessities as matters to be considered by the governing body at the meeting require timely action by the body that physical presence by a quorum of the members is not practical within the period of time requiring action and that participation by a quorum of the members by electronic or other means of communication is necessary. This is a regular scheduled meeting for the Tennessee Athletic Commission. The purpose of today's meeting with the members attending by teleconference or WebEx is to discuss the agenda as noticed on the website earlier. Um, if that uh, statement will satisfy um, the, that of the commission, I will just need a motion to accept that we have such a motion. This is Christy Halbert. This is Matt Reddish. I motion to accept. Okay, um, Christy Halbert. I think I heard you first, so we'll take the motion to accept by Christy Halbert. Matt, was that a, a second? Yes. Oh, great. For a roll call vote, Matt Reddish. Aye. Christy Halbert. Aye. Patrick Rand. Aye. And then Dan McGrew. Aye. All right, thank you. That's the, the statement of necessity was accepted. Uh, we'll get that fi uh, filed with the Secretary of State's uh, office um, appropriately within the uh, within the time frame dictated. Uh, for the agenda, I know that you, you have that in front of you there. Is there any um, comments or edits that anyone would like uh, for the agenda? Okay, if not, we'll accept a, uh, uh, is there a motion to accept the agenda as printed? I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Ms. Halbert. We have a motion from Christy Halbert. Do we have a uh, second? Second. Is that Mr. Wren? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. We got a second from Mr. Wren. For a roll call vote, Matt Reddish? Aye. Uh, Christy Halbert? Aye. Patrick Wren? Aye. Dan McGrew? Aye. All right, great. Thank you all. Um, the agenda is, uh, has been approved and uh, we'll, uh, we'll follow accordingly. Of course, we do have an opportunity at new business to bring up anything that may, uh, may come into that at that point. Um, before we begin, um, uh, Mr. Compton, Toby Compton, our, our assistant commissioner, he is uh, on the phone and uh, would just like to uh, address the, the, the board or the commission quickly. Um, and just had, he just had a few brief comments he'd like to uh, make and then to kind of uh, reintroduce himself. I know he's met most of you, but not everyone. Toby? Hey, Glenn, thanks. Uh, commissioners, um, thanks for uh, obviously your service and your time. Uh, it's great to uh, be with you virtually. Obviously, these are strange times for us all. Um, and uh, by and large, I'll say the, the, the commission and board meetings that we've had remotely um, have actually gone really well. You know, we, we've accomplished what we need to accomplish, and we're, we're getting by uh, in in this uh, in this new kind of world. Uh, it's always I, I always like meeting in person and seeing people and and, and having that fellowship. But uh, 
obviously uh, we're, we're we're constrained at the moment. Uh, where um, where I sorry, apologies. Uh, somebody just pulled up. Was like, hey, <laughs> uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, but you know, in these times we're kind of constrained. But um, yeah, the department is doing really well. I just kind of give a quick update on that. Uh, people are, are are managing to get by. Uh, they're uh, um, they you know, we we've not had a lot of people that have been uh, directly affected by the by the pandemic, the virus, uh, which is which is fortunate. Uh, our metrics have held up well, and so we're, we're continuing to go about um, all of the different services uh, to the the people of the state uh, in, in in pretty much a fashion that was very similar to uh, where we were at the end of February or early March. Uh, basically, the only thing we can't do is uh, service individuals who may come into the building. Obviously, our building is closed, and and everyone's working working remotely at this point. Um, I anticipate. Uh, probably, uh, we haven't had all the approvals yet, but probably somewhere around after the 4th of July, we'll, we'll come up with a new reopening plan where, where people will be in the building on, on at least uh, uh, a, a day or two a week. And, um, and, and that, that, will be, uh, that will be announced and shared uh, more readily. So we, we might, as an athletic commission, be able to meet uh, in, the, in the not too, too distant future. Um, we obviously, um, many of you probably know, and I know Gwen will update everyone. Uh, we have an, a, an event this week in Sullivan County. Um, there's an MMA contest uh, on the 20th. Uh, our, inspect, uh, our inspections team is, is gearing up for that, and Gwen is doing the licensing. Uh, we have worked with the county, Sullivan County, to get the uh, proper approvals. They are, they are one of the six counties that has their own health department, so they technically fall outside of um, – of the governor's executive orders, um, and um, and so we've had to work with them to make sure that they uh, they they grant the, the, the proper permissions for um, for that event to take place. And then today, I know we got the rules packet to the to discuss, and I'll I'll, I'll stay on the call while that's going on. Uh, just thank you for your attention to that, and uh, I know we've been working on this for some time. And um, I, I for one think these rules are uh, are an important thing to put in place. But uh, I'll stop there. Uh, again, thank you for your service. If y'all got any questions for me, be happy to take those uh, or or look into whatever might need to be looked into. Uh, but uh, thank you guys uh, very much. Thank you, uh, Toby. I appreciate the, those comments. And uh, just uh, for the for the sake and benefit of the commission, I'd like to echo and um, kind of piggyback on that and to say that. Well, uh, I, as administration, we also pre appreciate the support that we have received from our executive management. And, and to Toby's point as well, um, we haven't seen any hiccups in our licensing or uh, other than, you know, we've had to uh, uh, sort of make adjustments around the executive orders where necessary, uh, Sullivan County being case in point to that, you know, having to see how that all of that would practically work itself out. So th those are the challenges that we're all facing in this environment. But as from a licensing administrative standpoint, um, I think any any of our licensees would would feel that there's been absolutely no disruptions uh, otherwise. So I, I appreciate the support we've been getting, and we've got a hardy uh, online platform. And you know what we can do, we can do uh, of, um, you know working remotely, and as what we're doing now, even uh, the, this uh, this uh, board meeting itself is as proof to that point. So um, thank you, Toby. I appreciate that. All right, um, March minutes. Um, I trust you all had an opportunity to look at those. Any comments, edits that were noticed or uh, in regard? Okay. Do we have a uh, motion to accept the March minutes? This is Matt Reddish. Right. All right, thank you, uh, Matt Reddish. We have a motion from Matt Reddish. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, thank you, Mr. McGrew. We have a uh, second from Dan McGrew. Um, roll call vote, Matt Reddish. Aye. Christy Halbert. Aye. Patrick Wren. Aye. Dan McGrew. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, that's been, uh, we passed that. Let's move on to the director's report. Uh, the budget will just be for informational purposes only. There's nothing to, to vote on there. Um, let me uh, bring that in front of me here. All right, at our last meeting in March, we covered the trend analysis month to month through December. So we we will primarily be looking at the last three months of record, January to March, is what we're going to uh, hone in on there. Um, March's other expenses is due to administrative costbacks, uh, the uh, quarterly reallocation that happens um, every quarter. 
um, primarily due to customer service, personnel assistant, uh, assist their assistance in handling the IBF event there in February. Of course, you all remember that event. Um, You'll also notice that as is typical with our budget, that if you go down to the net surplus and deficit, we typically run in the red until we get a, a big event, um, which seems to stabilize our program. We, we pretty much depend on one of those per year, or at least every other year to, to keep us uh, solvent. Um, you'll, you'll notice just below the net surplus and deficit, uh, deficit we have a year-end reserve balance of $16,400. Um, that's what that's total program, you know, money in the bank, what we had for this program. Of course, we, we, we remained in, in the black and then, of course, we dipped as we normally do. Nothing, nothing outside the ordinary there. But then after our event in February, due to those revenues, we pulled back out into the black total program health of a, you know, 29, 29,000 and then only took a, a slight dip in March. Haven't had any events in April and, and May uh, or very limited activity, as you know, none in April and May because of the uh, um, the COVID-19 restrictions. So we're not anticipating any losses there. Um, there'll be some revenue coming in just from renewals, but that'll be very minor since we're not, we're not gonna have any initial uh, initial applications either. So we suspect that we'll we'll end the uh, we'll end the year much like what we did at the beginning in, in surplus, and that's where we want to be. So overall, um, I couldn't be happier with you know uh, with the projections given the circumstances as they are. Any comments about that or, or questions? Okay, that was just in informational purposes. If you do have any questions or comments, of course you can email those uh you know separately independently to me direct and i'll be happy to uh to, to flesh that out a little further if necessary but um that's the budget um if we can every single year about this time of the year we have to do the board meeting dates um that's basically putting the dates on the calendar for the next year uh, so those are patterned after uh after the dates we currently have that's uh, i believe the um the second uh monday of uh, each of those quarterly uh, of each of those months <clears throat> one one per quarter and then of course um september since we have labor day uh that one's i think the third monday but uh, the pattern is the same as, as what you uh, that mirrors this year and the years prior um i trust you had an opportunity to look at that as well is there any comments or questions or concerns about those dates okay we'll just need a uh, a motion then to accept those dates and then we'll get those posted on the website do we have a motion I make a motion. All right, great. Thank you. We got a motion from Dan McGrew. Do we have a second? Yes, sir. All right, we got a second from uh, Patrick Wren for yes, roll call sir. vote. Matt Reddish. Aye. Um, Christy Halbert. Aye. Patrick Wren. Aye. Dan McGrew. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, the board meeting uh, dates have passed. And then I skipped right over the election of officers. So let's go pick that up right quick. Um, to that point, um, election of officers. Let me read the statute that governs that 68115-106. Uh, the members of the uh, commission shall elect one member as chair of the commission who shall serve for a term of one year, whereupon another member shall be elected as provided in this chapter. Uh, statute only requires the election of a chair, but the commission has elected a vice chair in the in the past as a backup in the event uh, that were needed. Um, the only time that may be needed is if there was uh, an occasion where the chair was uh, um, was asked to, to appear before the um, before one of the committees over at Legislative Plaza uh, to discuss something like this rules package or something to that effect. That That's very rare and any really any member of the board will do so. Um, we'll, we'll elect the chair if someone uh, decides that they would like to, um, to offer a nomination for a vice chair, then we'll accept that too. But, um, uh, it only requires a chair. We don't have a chair right now because, uh, Steve Hanna was our chair and his, he's since come off the board since, uh, his term is ex has expired. So, uh, we'll just need a nomination from anyone regard regarding, um, a chair and a vice chair. I know you've had an opportunity to sort to kind of bounce that around over the past week or so. Does anyone have any uh, nominations in that regard? I'd like to nominate uh, Christy Halperin okay. as a chair okay. and Patrick Finn as vice chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, McGrew. We appreciate that. All right, any further discussion? Right now the nomination is for um, Dr. Halbert to be the chair and for uh, Mr. Wren to be the vice chair. Any further discussion? 
Okay. Um, for a roll call vote, Matt Reddish. Aye. Christy Halbert. Aye. Patrick Wren. Aye. Dan McGrew. Aye. All right. Thank you. Uh, we uh, just completed our uh, our election. It seems appropriate since this is uh, seems to be the election year already. So we just got an early start on it. I guess this was the Iowa caucus, but uh, we just jumped right past that and got right into it. So um, Christy Halbert, thank you for uh, being our uh, our chair. And Mr. Wren, thank you for uh, serving as our vice chair. Yes, sir. All right. Um, now that we've got that out of the way, we'll move on to the uh, legal report. Uh, Pam? Yes. Hello, everyone. This is Pam Spicer. Um, as you can see, uh, you've had an opportunity to review the legal report. There are only two matters on the report. Um, I'll just briefly summarize. Um, the first case, 2019, 100821 uh, just involves a combatant who basically complained that scoring was incorrect, incorrectly scored by the judges based on um, what the combatant thought was crowd influence. We received a re response from the respondent stating that obviously the crowd had no influence uh, in scoring the rounds and that based on that, I'm recommending closure of the complaint. If there's no questions on number two, I mean, on number one, I'll go to number two. And then, of course, I would need a motion and a roll call vote to accept the legal report. As far as number two, that's 2020-016861. Um, that involves uh, the event that occurred in February of this year. Um, based on the fact that the commission was using the unified rules at the time, uh, legal finds no violation and is recommending closure of that complaint as well. Any comments from our um, from our commission in regards to that legal report? Okay. Um, if uh, if um, if it is the will of the commission to accept council recommendations for closure for each, and again that's two zero nineteen one zero zero eight two one and two zero two zero zero one six eight six one, we'll need a uh, motion in that regard. Do we have such a motion? I'll make that motion. All right. Thank you, Ms. Halbert. Um, so we have a, um, a motion from uh, Christy Halbert. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Wren. We have a second from Mr. Wren. For roll call vote, Matt Reddish. Aye. All right. Christy Halbert. Aye. Patrick Wren. Aye. Dan McGrew. Aye. All right. Great. We've uh, cleared the legal report that's been approved. Um, that brings us to the uh, rule amendments. Um, this uh, rulemaking discussion portion, uh, let me just give you a quick little background on that. Um, we'll be discussing the rule minutes attached and hope to have this ready for a rules package uh, for and for a rule a rulemaking hearing rather um, in September at our next meeting. Uh, these rules are modeled uh, on the Association of Boxing Commissions and Combative Sports, ABC, affectionately known as uh, the unified rules. And um, what it is, is they were adopted by the commissions in 2017 initially. That's where they were drafted. And uh, a couple years ago, uh, the uh, the commissions ruled and voted to have all of the, accept all of these across all the jurisdictions and to include ours, us being a member of that association as well. Um, and to have it all effective by the end of this year. Uh, we started uh, We started some of the unified rules back in 2017. Um, those were already passed in, in a prior package, but this uh, this uh, rules package is the is the remaining what's left of all of those unified rules to bring us into compliance with the with the ABC unified rules as, uh, in total. So we're not we're we're having them all uh, brought together in culmination instead of in part. So this will be the the, the culmination of all that effort, uh, which will bring us in line with all the other jurisdictions. Which I think in you know. And long term will be a benefit with with the the commerce across the state lines, uh, bringing that uniformity, uh, and also with the the will of the the industry as well. And of course, you all are very familiar with unified rules. I, I don't need to belabor it. You've um, you, you you know these very well and have, have already been exposed to these prior. But that's what this is. This this entire red lines rule package is our effort in that regard. Pam, if I, if you would like to open it up, and, and if there's anything else you need to say in regards to that, well, I'm sure they would welcome those comments as well. 
Yes, um, thank you, Glenn. Again, this is Pam Spicer. Um, as Glenn mentioned, uh, what you have before you is the red line of what will be rulemaking hearing rules. Uh, it's important for you all to note that because these are going forward as rulemaking hearing rules, uh, the public will have an opportunity to comment at the appropriate time once you all have approved the rules and the rules go through the appropriate change of chain of command. Uh, just to let you all know, there are several steps involved in that process, uh, which involve internal approval, uh, AG's office approval, governor's office approval, uh, before they come back to you all in the form of a rulemaking hearing. Uh, you will vote to approve these rules today as drafted, and then they will start the longer process of being approved by everyone else and come back to you in the form of a rulemaking hearing where the public will be able to make comments on the rules. Assuming, as Glenn said, that all of that can be done and properly noticed, we will attempt to have the rulemaking hearing in September. If for some reason all the necessary approvals are not made in a timely fashion, then of course it would be December before we could have the rulemaking hearing. Um, also, as Glenn said, that was just my general explanation of how the rulemaking hearing will come to be. Um, what I would like to do is obviously answer any questions or take any comments that you all have about the rules. I know that you've had an opportunity to review them, and these rules are basically bringing us in line with the unified rules for mixed martial arts and boxing. So you'll see um, two different chapters. There's obviously the professional boxing chapter, and then the kickboxing and mixed martial arts chapters. Hi, Pam, this is Matt Reddish. Were these, um, yes. were these the new rules that were, um, I guess, promulgated at the ABC conference last year? Uh, let me see the date. Um, the date of the unified rules of boxing that I have as amended uh, in 2000 looks like 16. Glenn, is that correct? I think I drafted the rules in 16. I was just curious if these um, rules are, were updated from a, a more recent ABC conference that like all those states um, both well, unified we have, the rules and Right, we have the unified rules of mixed martial arts were amended in July 2019. The, the National Association, is that what you're referring to? Right, I, I was just asking if yes. that's where these rules came from. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. We had a rules packet, um, uh, previously our rules packet, but it did not include all of the changes to the unified rules. Okay, I think personally it's important to keep our rules in line with the uniform rules. Um, yes, I know, yes. For example, on this uh, complaint we just had, it looked like um, it might have been a little disparity between what our rules say and what the unified rules are. So uh, I personally think it's important that uh, no, we keep we keep with the unified, what other states have voted to adopt. Um, and I'll generally go through um, the boxing changes. Obviously, you can see from the red line, um, obviously, anything in red is what's been taken out. Anything in blue that you see is an addition. Uh, generally speaking, related to the seconds, uh, we are revising that from three to five. We are removing the standing eight count. Removing the three knockdown rule.
and continuing on page five, you see where that has been taken out and then there's been added the additional no standing at count, no three knockdown rule, and a boxer who has been knocked down cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Under foul related injuries, we've also added some language about a fighter who's been hit with an accidental low blow must continue after a reasonable amount of time, but no more than five minutes or he or she will lose the fight. And then we've added language under the referee section, you see number four, if a referee has reason to believe that a foul which he did not see may have been committed. He may pull the judges to determine which foul was committed, considering all the facts, opinions, and making his determination, and it's his sole discretion to ask for a replay. Under results of contest, this is really adding in language that we did not have, which will provide further explanation. Uh, when we're looking at results of contests and will help uh, hopefully with the complaint process, inspections process, and kind of guide everyone in the appropriate way, which we did not have before. So that's why you see a lot of language in blue, because that language is taken out of the unified rules that were adopted in July 2019. Does anybody have any comments so far? And if not, I'll continue, but I, want, I meant to stop before we, before we started with the kickboxing mixed martial arts rules. I, I have a comment. Um, okay. Who is this? This is Dan McGrew. <clears throat> okay. Uh, just some of, of the, uh, how some things are worded on here. Uh, and uh, one thing I think maybe left out uh, right before weight classifications, the paragraph right before that, talk about the no contest, forfeit, disqualification, technical draw, technical decisions. Uh, on number eight, forfeit, there was no explanation for that particular one. That was a uh, something left out or on purpose or you see what I'm talking about? I do. I'm I'm comparing it to the unified rules now. Um in the unified rules there is no definition. So that's why in our rule the, the word for Forfeit is in black, meaning that was already in our existing rules. It's not an addition, okay. it's as is in our current rules. And in the unified rules for MMA, there is no said definition. Okay. Uh, I also noticed. So like on, oh, go ahead. I'm no, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you're fine. Go I, ahead. I was just gonna let you know the the, if you, at, in the unified rules, when, under types of decisions, the unified rules provide more information than what we had. So for, um, for the types of decisions that had further explanation in the unified rules, we added that to our rules. Okay. All right, also, um, there was a section of under, under the uh, referees where it talks about okay. uh, the inspecting of the uh, bandages for each contestant. Um, um, I thought the word bandages may be replaced by hand wraps because I think it would be clearer. Clearer. 
of to what they were referring to. If it says, Can you tell uh, me where you are in the rules? That's in the, under the referees, and that's 0145-02-10. Uh, Zero one four five dash zero two dash ten referees. Um, are you referring to, and this is partly so everyone can follow along under two, it says prior to the start of about the referee shall. Yes. And then it gives A through F. Correct. And this is, okay. uh, and then. This is under B. Turn that the commission. Did you say D? No, B. B is in boy. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so that is language that is not being changed. I mean, we can clearly discuss that. That's language as it currently stands. Um, when I'm drafting the rules to give you all a full understanding of what's being changed, anything in black currently exists in the rule. But if this is something you all want to consider changing, we can amend that. I think it would be it would be clearer. To say to say uh, hand wraps or wraps. Was there any other it discussion in regards? Oh, sorry. It says bandages in B, and then if you look further down, it also says bandages in E. Does anyone else have any comments about that? I don't have a comment about that in particular. Um, I think maybe it might be something for a good uh, rulemaking discussion. Uh, free to bring to us in the future, Pam. I, I would um, I'm encourage. Kind of if, sorry, I'm curious if um, you have like a lot of definitions in here. Was there like a definition section in the rules that that fit under, or with the structure of our rules, that does not um, make sense to put it under a definitions tab? There's not a definitions tab. I assume you're referring to the section that talks about types of decisions. Right. Results of the contest under point 11. Yes. It's that's where that is in our current rules. And before, like, for example, on physical tap out, we did not have a definition for that. So that's where it exists in the current rules. So instead of uh, moving to a definition section because this is where this was previously. We're just defining those terms as we've already had them. I mean, I mean that's perfectly fine. If we want to come back and look at that uh, at another time, it's, it's fine with me. Um, and, um... I also had one other thing here. Throughout the rules, I happen to see uh, where it talks about uh, his second or and uh, his coach or something like that. But in some places, it, it says uh, his or her. I know that we have female boxers and MMA, and and I think that it should be kind of consistent where it talks about his or her. Or maybe they could just use boxer. Uh, for instance, in uh, rule zero can, one. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. No, I see where you're saying that. Like specifically under second, it right. says to assist him between the rounds. Um, I can make that more gender neutral. Um, and that would not be considered a substantive change. Uh, when we're going through these, as long as there's no substantive changes to what I have prepared, uh, when we vote on these and we have the roll call vote, then they would continue up the chain. 
if there are substantive changes to the rules packet as I have drafted it, then we would have to come back um, in September and go through them again. Okay. So you all know. Um, but I, I, I did not consider gen making things gender neutral a substantive change. Okay. Um, so that kind of goes back to the wraps discussion and, you know, I don't want to uh, continue a discussion if it's not necessary, but if anyone else has any comments on that, um, I would need to kind of know that now, or are we tabling that to a separate rulemaking package? I wasn't really clear on that with the discussion. I think it may have been Matt Reddish that said something about tabling that. One um, just a fiscal uh, note that I'd like to make in regards to that is um, uh, the, typically to, uh, to, to move these through the chain that requires um, uh, legal to participate in that and oftentimes to um, to advocate for that at the committees and some that can that can get into a billable hour. I know before mm -hmm. we've spent near, you know, $10,000 for a rules package and you've seen our budget already. We're looking at about 27,000 total budget going into the next year. And, you know, so we're always looking for that big event to keep, keep us afloat. So, you know, we're, we'd like to do one rules package. We really, I don't know that this, this, uh, that the commission could afford multiple rules packages, uh, you know, floating at different timelines. So if there's, if there are changes that we 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 feel strong about, then uh, you know that might be something to consider. Or if the, if we do feel strong about it, but we could wait till another year, that's fine too. But this will probably be our our rules package after the fiscal year. I think my concern is just derailing our um, adoption of the unified rules. Right. Uh, if we think we can do it without delaying that any further, I'm happy to, um, you know, discuss making, you know, the not substantive changes that uh, Pam referenced. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Any more questions? Sam? And, well, I was going to point out just so everyone realizes um, when the when the rulemaking package that you're looking at is only opening the sections of the rules that I'm, that may have changes. So you see the entire rule, then you see the changes within that section. So for example, um, 0145-02-0.04 is a specific section dedicated to bandages. Um, so that might be something we want to consider in a future future date because I did not open that section for this discussion. Um, if there's no questions about, I'll pick up kind of where we left off. Um, we kind of went through these definitions that we're adding. I know you all have looked at those. Um, then under weight classifications, um, adding a sentence that discusses if a contestant misses the contracted weight and the two competitors are in different weight classes, the heavier opponent shall not exceed five pounds of the lower weight fighter. And then the only other addition is under apparel to be consistent with the unified rules, which discusses female combatants wearing short sleeve shirts above the elbow or sleeveless form fitting rash guards and sports bras, no loose fitting tops or and or breast protectors shall be allowed. If no one has um, any other comments, uh, what I noted was one change you all would like to see where I can go back through and make the rules anytime it refers to he or she, him or her, make those gender neutral, which I don't consider substantive. Um, so I can finalize this packet, uh, send it up for the necessary approvals, 
and then hopefully get it set for rulemaking hearing either in September or December. Um, if there's no other discussion, which I'm happy to discuss uh, anything that you all want to discuss, then I would just need a motion and roll call vote for me to move forward as your legal counsel with these rules. I have a one last question, Pam. This is Matt Reddish. Um, and maybe someone else on the call might um, have more input on this. I was curious about the technical submission definition. Um, you state technical submission when a legal submission act results in unconsciousness or broken slash dislocated bones um, slash joints. So I think it's um, it's pretty common for fights to keep going with with fighters who have broken a bone in their hand or um, an MMA um, other you know, broken a bone in their foot something like that. I'm curious if um, this definition. I want to make sure it's not forcing about the stop if there's a broken bone um, or dislocated joint. And I'm happy uh, to discuss that. Does anyone have uh, anything to add on the technical submission under the unified rules under types of decisions? It says submission by, and it gives the tap out definition, the verbal tap out and the technical submission. So that information is taken from the unified rules. Okay, I think it's fine if like you, you declare, I guess, for re reporting purposes, we say like they won by technical submission because um, like an arm bar or something like that. I just, um, just want to make sure that you knowing your opinion, putting um, this definition in there wouldn't stop a bout due to a broken bone. Does that make sense? I think it's considered a type of decision that can be made mm -hmm. and a definition of such where we didn't have that before. We didn't have technical submission at all before. So that's really open for discussion. That's included in the unified rules and that's something that you all can uh, vote that you do or do not want in this rules package. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Patrick Wren here. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, these things that we've adopted uh, from the Unified Rules Package, um, it's the same basic uh, ground that's covered by other uh, boxing and MMA uh, in different states that surround us and in some of the bigger states, uh, New York, Las Vegas, and such as that. Uh, so far as a broken bone uh, is, unless it would be something like a, a tibia or an arm that's just obviously broken. Uh, it's been my experience ever since MMA started in this state that we have a doctor there that's qualified to make that judgment. And it kind of takes it off of off of the judge's uh, 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 responsibility. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I feel that uh, what we've done uh, by uh, uh, shadowing the unified rules of these other states is probably uh, and legally uh, one of the best options that we've got. Just figured I'd. Um, so I just I just pulled up the rule that it says um, a context of mi mixed martial arts may end. So since it says may, I don't think it would um, require it to end. So if I withdraw that that comment, it looks like this would just like a kind of said beginning might just be for reporting purposes.
Does anyone else have any comments or discussion on the rules? Do you need a motion, Pam? No, I ha I have not heard anyone make a motion. If there's no other comments or requested changes other than the gender neutral request, then I would need a motion and a roll call vote. Do we have such a motion to adopt uh, the, the current rules package uh, to include those non-substantive uh, gender neutral uh, um, changes? Do we have such a motion? I'll make a motion. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. McGrew. We have a motion from Dan McGrew. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a second from Christy Halbert for a roll call vote. Matt Reddish. Aye. Christy Halbert. Aye. Patrick Wren. Aye. And Dan McGrew. Aye. All right, thank you all. Um, this package will uh, move on up the. We'll move on down the chain. Uh, Pam uh, will um, get that going for us and thank you, Pam, for unpacking that and for your work on this. I really appreciate that. It required her to to, to take uh, both the Unify Rules MMA and boxing and to go line by line and to, to put this before us. So we appreciate your hard work and uh, and, and, and seeing this very important work uh, accomplished and, uh, and getting us into uh, conformity with the rest of the jurisdictions around us. So thank you for that. Oh, no problem at all. Thank you all for having this discussion today. It's always helpful. And like Glenn said, I will move these up the chain, um, you know, obviously as time allows and as quickly as possible and circle back to you all, hopefully at the September meeting. Okay, great. Um, and uh, we'll properly notice that rulemaking hearing too. If, if we don't run any snags along the way in the timeline, um, we'll notify uh, the public both on our website, but also on um, through uh, notify as well for those that are signed up for that. So um, we'll get that out there and then have our rulemaking hearing. Thank you, Pam. Yes. All right. Um, th that's that's all we had on the agenda so far, except for the new business. Is there anything that uh, the members would like to discuss? Okay. Well, uh, I'd like to thank you all for you know moving things around. This got a different platform for us and. But it looks like everyone adjusted nicely and it went smoothly. So I appreciate your accommodation and your flexibility. Um, if that, if there being no new business, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion? Matt Reddish, I motion to adjourn. All right, thank you, Mr. Reddish. We got a motion from Matt Reddish to adjourn. Do we have a second? I second. All right, thank you, Mr. Wren. We've got a second from Patrick Wren for roll call vote. Matt Reddish. Aye. Christy Albert. Aye. Patrick Wren. Aye. Dan McGrew. Aye. All right, thank you all. We are adjourned. Have a lovely thank you. day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.